We continue now at the top of Daf Chav Vav Amad Aleph and Masechus Baba Basra. This is Baba Basra, Daf 26a. And the previous Amad the Gemara said that Papi Yonah was poor and then he became wealthy. And when he became wealthy, he built a mansion. And there were neighbors that were pressing sesame seeds nearby. It was causing the mansion to shake. So he came to Ravashi to complain. And Ravashi said, even though the halacha is generally like Rabbi Yossi, that it's al hanizik laharchek esatzmo, the person being damaged needs to be the one to distance himself, not the one doing the damage. However, Rabbi Yossi admits by giri delay, if you have an immediate kind of damage, so then it is something where the mazik does have to distance himself. And so therefore, in this case, those who are pressing the sesame seeds do need to distance themselves. But the Gemara asked Vikam, the Gemara asked how much does the mansion have to shake that that's considered to be a damage and the Gemara now answers it's enough that the lid on the mouth of a jar that it's going to shake Rashi says let's say you put a jug you put that on the wall and then the lid's on top of it so because of the shaking of the mansion the lid is going to shake as well if it's shaking that much so then the mazik is going to have to distance himself and the Gemara continues in the household of Bar Mirion, the son of Ravin, Kavanavsi kissed them when they would beat flax, Hava Azla Rakso Mazka Inchi, the chaff would fly off and it would damage people. Also, Lakami de Ravina, they came before Ravina, Omar Luhi said to them, Kiamrinon Moder of Yosi Bigiri delay. When do we say that Rabiosi admits that the person is responsible by Giri delay when it's an immediate damage? Hani Mili de Kaazli Mikoho, that's only if it's going because of the person's force. But Hacha, but over here, Zekahu de Kamamtila, it's really the wind that is blowing the chaff, and therefore they are not going to be responsible. The Gemara continues, Maskifla Marba Ravashi, Marba Ravashi asks, Maishna Mizora, Veruach Mesayata, well, what's the difference between this and on Shabbos when a person winnows and the wind is assisting? We say that's a Malach on Shabbos, so apparently it is considered to be your action. So why is it considered to be your action on Shabbos, but it's not considered to be their action over here by, over here by the beating of the flax? And the Gemara says, Amrua Kamei de Meremar, when they said this before Meremar, Amar Luhu, he said to them, Hainu Zora Veruach Mesayata, actually that is a good proof. This is exactly the same as winnowing and the wind helps out, and therefore, in fact, they are responsible in this case when the chaff does damage. But the Gemara says, Ula Ravina, but what about according to Ravina? Again, Ravina is the one that rejects this comparison. Ravina is the one they came to at first, and he said that here, since the wind is doing it, they're not responsible. So, What's the difference between this case and a case of a spark that goes from the hammer, the hizik and causes damage, the chayev l'shalim, there everybody agrees your chayev to pay. Why would it be any different when you're beating flax and the chaff goes off and does damage? And the Gemara answers with a sim- simple distinction. Hasam over there, Nicha laid the lazel. When it comes to the spark, he actually wants that to get as far away from himself as possible. Therefore, he's responsible. But Hachabot over here, Lo Nicha laid the lazel. It's immaterial to him. He doesn't care if it goes off far. And that's why in this case, it is different. And Rashi explains, Ula Ravina Maishna. Again, the Gemara asked, according to Ravina, who says, by the beating of the flax, the individual is going to be putter because of the wind. So the Gemara asks, what's the difference between this case and the sparks that fly from the hammer? And Rashi notes, now I understand in the case of the person who's winnowing and the wind is blowing it, so that's not necessarily a refutation to Ravina. Because you could say that Ravina holds, you can't learn monetary cases from Isr Shabbos. Shabbos is totally different. It all goes by Malachas Machshevis. As long as it falls into the category of Malachas Machshevis, it's going to be Osir. We give a similar answer to this kind of a question in Baba Kama. And the Gemara continues with the Mishnah, Lo yita adam ilon a person shouldn't plant a tree near the field of his friend, Elim kein hirchak mimenu arba amos, unless he distances himself for amos, echod gefanim, whether that applies to a vineyard, ve'echod kalilon, whether it applies to all kinds of trees. Hayageder ben tayim, now let's say there's a fence between the two properties, so then zeh somech legeder mikan, vezeh somech legeder mikan, this one can go all the way up to the fence from his side, and the other one can go all the way up to the fence from his side. Hayu shoroshim yotz Let's say the roots of the tree are going into his neighbor's property. So then, mamik gimel tvachim. The neighbor is allowed to dig three tvachim deep. In order that it shouldn't hold back the plow, meaning he can dig up the roots for three tvachim, those first three tvachim, in order that he is able to better plow. Let's say he's digging a pit, or he's digging a cistern, or a cave. So then he can cut even more than three tvachim deep, and he can go down, he can descend in order to make this pit or cistern, etc., and the wood belongs to him. 
And Rashi explains Samach Lasada Chaveiro. Again, the case is a person shouldn't plant a tree near his, the field of his friend, of his neighbor, unless he's four Amos away. Bein Sada Halavan, Bein Sada Ha'ilan. Rashi says it doesn't matter if it's a field with grain or with trees. Vitaim. And now, what's the reason why you need this four Amos? Kedei Avoda Sakerim. It's because he's going to need to work his area. He's going to need to work the vineyard. Shekeshayach Rosh Asilanosav. When this person is plowing around his trees, Lo Yehitzar Chalachnas Mecharishasa Lesoch Sada Chaveiro. The problem is we don't want him to enter with his plow into his neighbor's property. That's why you need that four amos so that he can plow around his own trees and not end up in his neighbor's property. And then the Mishnah said, Mamik, again, this is talking about the neighbors allowed to dig up the first three Tvachim of roots. Mamik lehen bal hasada sheyatsu lesochu, the owner of the field where the roots are extending into his field, he can dig up those roots for the first three Tvachim. Kotzitz ba'omek gimel Tvachim, again, he can cut at a depth of three Tvachim. Now, the very last line of the Mishnah said that if he wants to dig a pit or something like that, then he's allowed to cut and dig the pit all the way. And it said, v'ha'etzim shalo, the wood belongs to him. It doesn't say clearly who. And so so Rashi says, Begemar Mefarish shall me. The Gemara will explain who exactly gets the wood. And the Gemara says, Ton it was taught, Arba Amos Sha'amru, when they said you need four Amos, Kedei Avoda Sakarim. Again, it's like Rashi said, that's in order to be able to work the vineyard and not end up in the neighbor's property. Amar Shmuel Shmuel says, Lo Shanu Ela Beretz Yisrael. This mission is talking specifically in Eretz Yisrael. Avol Bebovel, but in Bovel, Shte Amos. You don't need four Amos, you only need two Amos because the plowing was a little smaller. The plow was smaller, it didn't end up in the neighbor's property, even if he just gave two Amos. And the Gemara continues, Tanya Nami we have a brisa that supports this distinction. It says in the brisa that you can't plant a tree near the neighbor near the neighboring field unless you're two Amos away. But our Mishnah said four Amos away. The Gemara says, rather, is it not like Shmuel said? You make a distinction between Eretz Yisrael and Bavel. In Eretz Yisrael, it's four Amos. In Bavel, it's two Amos. And the Gemara says there are some that set it up as a contradiction initially. Initially, Tanan, we learned in our Mishnah, Lo Yita Adam Ilan Samach Lasada Chaveru Elim Ken Hirchik Mimenu Arbamos. It says in our Mishnah, you can't plant a tree near the field of the neighbor unless you're distanced by four Amos. Vatanya, but then we learn a Brisa Shtei Amos that it's actually two Amos. Amar Shmuel and Shmuel answers the contradiction. Shmuel says Lokaja is not difficult. Kan be Bavel, Kan be Eretz Yisrael. In one case, we're talking Bavel, that's two Amos, and in one case, in the Mishnah, we're talking Eretz Yisrael. There it is, four Amos. And the Gemara continues. Rava Bar Rav Chanan Havu Le Hanu Dikli Amitzra De Pardeisa De Yosef. Rav Bar Rav Hanan had palm trees along the boundary of the vineyard of Rav Yosef. Some birds came and they settled on these palm trees. And then they would go down to the vineyard and they would damage the vineyard. So Amar so he said to them, Zil Kotz, cut down the palm trees. Essentially, they're causing me damage because they're drawing the attention of the birds. The birds are sitting on the palm trees and then damaging my vineyard. Amar Lehi said back to him, But I distanced myself the proper amount. Why do I need to cut them down? Amar Lehi said to him, Hani mili lonos, that's true if it's by trees. Avala gefanim, but over here you're near a vineyard, but inon you need to be more distanced. But the Gemara says, but we, we learned in our Mishnah, echad gefanim v'echad kalilon, doesn't matter if it's a vineyard, doesn't matter if it's any other kind of tree. Amar Lehi, so he said back to him, Hani mili ilon le'ilon, that's true if it's one tree to another kind of tree, the similar tree, or gefanim le'gefanim, or let's say a vineyard next to a vineyard, aval ilon le'gefanim, but over here in this case where you have trees next to a vineyard, but inon tve, the distance needs to be more. Amar Lehi said back to him, I know lo kaitzna, I'm not going to cut down this tree. To Yomar Rav, because Rav says, Haidikla de toin kaba, asr le if you have a palm tree and it's still able to produce a kava of fruits, so it's asr to cut down such a tree, so I don't want to cut down the tree. The Yomar of Chanina, and Chanina further said, Lo shachiv shichas beri, ala de kotzte nasa, below zimne, the reason why shichas, my son, died, is because he cut down a fig tree, not in the proper time, it was still producing fruits. So mari nichale, now the master, if you want to, leikots, you should go ahead and cut it down yourself, but I don't want to cut it. And the Gemara continues, Repapa havalei hanu dikli amitzra derev huna bereid derev Yoshua. Repapa had palm trees along the boundary with his neighbor Rav Huna bereid derev Yoshua. Azal ashkechei dehav echafer. He found that Rav Huna bereid derev Yoshua was digging the kakoyetz sharashem and was cutting up the roots of his trees. Amar Lehi said to him, my high, what is this that you're cutting my roots? Amar Lehi said back to him, Rav Huna said back to Repapa, Tanan, we learned in the Mishnah, hayu sharashem yotzim lasoch shel chaveru, if the roots are extending to the neighbor, ma'amik shlo the neighbor's allowed to dig three tvachim in order not to hold back the plow. Amar Lehi, so Rapapa said back to him, Hani mili shlosha, that's true three tvachim. Ma'arka chafar tvei, but the master of Huna Breder of Yeshua, you're, you're digging much more than that. Amar Lehi, so he said back to him, Ana boros shichnu ma'oros, kachafarna, I'm digging cisterns, ditches, and caves. 
Zitznan, because we learned in the Mishnah, Hayachofer bore Shiachamar, if he's digging these kinds of cisterns and ditches and caves, Kotzeitz Vyorid, Vaitsam Shalom, he's allowed to cut as much and go down as much as he needs, and the wood belongs to him, and so therefore I am allowed to dig even more than three Tvachim. Amar Papa Rapapa said, Amri Le Kuli, Velo Yechili Le, I tried all kinds of arguments against him, and I was not successful, and we will continue with this discussion in the next video, and Dafchavav Amid Beis.